Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to our presentation on concrete quantum cryptanalysis of binary elliptic curves, a paper published in Chess 2021, written by Gustavo Banegas, Dan Bernstein, Tanya Lange, and myself, Iggy van Hoof. So, uh, what uh, does it actually mean, concrete quantum cryptanalysis? So, as you might be aware, in 1994, Shor published uh, Shor's algorithm. And Shor's algorithm allows a sufficiently large quantum computer uh, to break RSA and the discrete logarithm problem. And so our question for today is how big is sufficiently large? In previous work uh, looked at RSA as well as prime field elliptic curve Diffie Hellman. Uh, but today we will be talking about binary elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman. And when we say concrete, we, re we really mean uh, the number of qubits and the number of gates. And these numbers we will uh, explain during this presentation what they actually mean. All right, so uh, Shor's algorithm, we are going to be treating most of Shor's, uh, the quantum part of Shor's algorithm as a black box. And uh, we will be really focusing on the on adding pre-computed points, which is uh, the non-quantum step of Shor that is repeated a lot and is uh, really the most uh, expensive one. And so uh, we we are adding multiples of a point uh, on a binary elliptic curve, and to do that, uh, we need addition uh, in binary finite fields, multiplication, uh, as well as division in these binary finite fields. So today uh, we will we'll be talking about building quantum circuits uh, for these uh, actions and then talking uh, about circuits for uh, the full point addition. And finally, we'll be putting it together uh, for the full result. All right, so these quantum circuits, uh, we built them uh, using quantum gates acting on quantum bits. And we call quantum bits qubits. And again, today we'll be not be talking about the quantum part of Shor's algorithm. We will be talking about uh, the reversible part, uh, which means these gates are, uh, are part of also uh, classical reversible computing, which you might have heard of. Uh, and we will be using uh, four reversible gates uh, today. So the first one is the not gate. Hopefully if you're familiar with that one. Uh, in classical computing, and it works the same here. And you can see it's reversible uh, because if you repeat the not gate, you get uh, one minus uh, one plus a, or you, uh, you get a back. And uh, the swap gate uh, is the second gate. Uh, the swap gate, we don't treat as a real gate, rather we treat it uh, as an overhead uh, thing where, uh, in overhead, you replace uh, A with B and B with A. You just rename them uh, rather than physically building a swapping gate. So this is, this is free and cheap. Uh, so, uh, but the expensive gates, uh, we start with the C0 gate, which is the quantum uh, or reversible equivalent of XOR. And you see it's reversible because uh, you have to keep one of the inputs around. If you keep B around and you have A plus B, you can add B to it again. Uh, so you repeat the gates uh, and to undo it. So it's reversible. And these uh, quantum gates acting on multiple qubits are really much more expensive. And so the most expensive gate uh, by far is the Toffoli gate, which replaces uh, AND. Uh, of course, uh, AND, if you had two uh, bits, if it would output zero, you would not know uh, what the other bit is, even if you keep one of the bits around. So in the quantum case, we have to keep uh, use three qubits and we have to keep both inputs around. So we add the end result, uh, we XOR the end result to a third qubit uh, C in this uh, example. And again, if you repeat the Toffoli gate, you get C plus A times B plus A times B which uh, modulo two uh, is C again. And we only need these four gates to really uh, 
built the circuits we will be talking about today. All right, so these circuits, um, we will, uh, as I said at the beginning, we will be looking at how big does a quantum computer need to be uh, to actually implement these circuits. Uh, so that will be our primary concern, the number of qubits, but we still need, uh, we still need more measures of quality. So in classical computing, uh, you might be uh, thinking about count, just counting the number of gates, the number of, for example, XOR and AND gates, and taking that as the complexity measure. But in, uh, reverse, in class, uh, quantum computing, the Toffoli gate is much, much more expensive than the C0 gates. Uh, so because it's actually on three qubits instead of two qubits. And uh, estimates put it from at, between at least seven times to many, many more times as expensive. So our secondary concern for today uh, will be counting the number of Toffoli gates. Uh, but you can go beyond that because as you might be aware, uh, you can paralyze some of these uh, Toffoli gates. So you have a measure called depth, the actual number of steps it takes at doing multiple gates at the same time. But we will not be focusing on that today, but it is also a very good measure of quality of a circuit. And finally, uh, I will be talking today about what we call logical qubits. That means qubits with a very low rate of error. But if you actually want to implement this on a physical quantum computer, you're, you're dealing with physical qubits and you need many physical qubits to simulate uh, a logical qubit. So if, uh, if uh, today we will be talking about, for example, needing around uh, 2000 uh, qubits for, uh, to break uh, ECDH, uh, but that means logical qubits. So to actually implement it on a quantum computer, you need many, many more uh, physical qubits. So if you read in a headline, uh, there will, uh, there's Google built a quantum computer uh, with 2000 uh, qubits, then that does not mean uh, uh, right away that ECDH is completely broken. Although that will be a very good sign that we uh, probably should be moving on to post-quantum cryptography. All right, so uh, let's go over the actions we need. <laughs> so addition, addition is a straightforward action. Uh, in, the, in the simple case, if you add uh, a constant, you just, uh, in the finer, binary finite field, you just use not gates. So that's the same as a classical uh, example. And uh, if you want to add two variables, uh, classically, you would use bit, bitwise XOR, but we need to keep one of those inputs around. We can't use XOR gates, uh, so we use C0. And uh, since we are dealing with uh, up to n, uh, n bits, n qubits, uh, we need n C0 gates. And again, we need to keep one of the inputs around. We can undo this computation by just repeating it. In this case, all right, so next we, uh, we look at multiplication with X. So we need to go a bit more in depth into uh, our structure. So today we will be presenting every field element as a polynomial. Uh, and since every polynomial is a binary polynomial, you can very nicely uh, implement them as bit strings. And so these polynomials all have degree up to, up to N minus one. Uh, and the field polynomial has degree N. And so if you just want to multiply by X, uh, if we ignore the modular reduction for now, uh, this is uh, free with uh, just swapping every qubit uh, one to the left, or in the, in the picture of uh, swapping everything one down. And you can see that in the picture on the slide, that the first three uh, swap gates is just multiplying by X. Uh, and then we need uh, to do the actual modular reduction. And uh, in the binary finite field, uh, it depends on the number of coefficients uh, of, the, of the polynomial, m. Uh, so if it's trinomial, we just need one C0 gate. And if it's pentanomial, we need three C0 gates. Uh, so that's also fairly efficient. And that's the, in the picture, you can see that on the right. That's, that's the, the C0 gate. And so uh, now we have uh, multiplication uh, by x. Uh, and since we are doing this in place, uh, this is a linear map, uh, we can actually 
also do division by x now, because if you want to reverse this, you just go from right to left, you have now suddenly, suddenly have an algorithm for division by x without really having to take extra steps to create this algorithm. So that's uh, for linear maps, that's a very nice property. All right, so if uh, multiplication by just x, uh, what we, if we want to multiply by a more complex but still constant polynomial? So in, uh, in a finite field, multiplication by a constant polynomial is a linear map. Uh, so you can write it down uh, if you have your uh, polynomial representation, you can write it down as a matrix. And what we can do uh, in general, if we have uh, a linear map and an uh, invertible matrix, uh, we can turn that always turn that into a quantum circuit consisting only of C0 gates. So uh, that we do that using an LUP decomposition to decide where the C0 gates go. And so that takes up to n squared uh, C0 gates, but it takes no Toffoli gates. So that's very nice. And specifically in the binary finite field, we can do the same with squaring. Uh, because squaring in the binary finite field uh, is also a linear map, uh, which means again, we can use a uh, an LUP decomposition to create a series of C0 gates uh, to get uh, in-place squaring. And if you want to invert it, you also get uh, in-place uh, square roots and uh, in-place uh, division by a constant polynomial. And uh, later we will need to uh, add squaring results to a different uh, polynomial. And you can actually implement that with less C0 gates because squaring in uh, binary finite fields is uh, very well behaved and takes like up to three N uh, C0 gates. All right, uh, so we have multiplication by a constant. We're going to be looking at uh, something uh, much more complex, uh, which is general multiplication. You have two variable polynomials and you want to multiply them. Uh, so uh, you will need some Toffoli gates now. Uh, so in uh, one of my earlier works, I looked at uh, doing uh, quantum Karatsuba multiplication. And so Karatsuba multiplication is a fairly if, uh, efficient uh, implementation of multiplication. And so really uh, the main part of this result is that, you only, uh, that, is that we only end up needing uh, 3n space. So 2n uh, qubits uh, for the input and 1n uh, for the output, because we need to keep that input around in order to be able to uncompute uh, the output. It's not like uh, like the in-place multiplication, where if we want to compute, we can just go from right to left and then have division. Uh, sadly, uh, going from multiplication to division uh, will again take some extra time. And so, what this what's nice about this algorithm is that it needs to know ancillary qubits, and uh, these ancillary qubits uh, are usually used to store intermediate values. And generally, we consider having these bad. Because ancillary qubits, uh, you have to uncompute them. You have to set them back to zero because qubits are very expensive. And so by having uh, no ancillary qubits uh, in this uh, multiplication algorithm, we consider it very efficient. And also the Toffoli gate count, uh, we consider very efficient because it's minimal, at least for Karatsuba multiplication. All right, so we uh, have multiplication. Finally, we, we have division or uh, in the, our finite field uh, inversion. And so uh, this will be the most expensive step of our algorithm. And so for this algorithm, we will compare two methods uh, for inversion. The first one is the extended Euclidean algorithm based uh, division. And the second one is Fermat's little theorem based division. So for the extended Euclidean algorithm, uh, you're hopefully familiar with that. But uh, as you might be aware, it has a variable number of steps. So if you want to implement it reversibly, you have to keep track of the number of steps and keep that around. So, what, uh, so in order to fix that, we implemented uh, a classical constant time uh, extended Euclidean algorithm-based inversion. And this is, uh, this is nice uh, for our case, because uh, for the quantum case, because that means uh, you don't have to use uh, keep around the counter or anything like that uh, at the end of your algorithm. And in this picture, you can see a representation uh, of this algorithm uh, in, a, in a big circuit. All right, 
So this uh, this that was the extended Euclidean algorithm. Uh, you you should you're hopefully aware how it works. Otherwise, you can look at our paper for more. And uh, so the the other option was Fermat's little theorem, uh, which is x to the p uh, equals x mod p, and from that we can find inversion uh, by doing exponentiation. And so this works uh, this works just as well in the binary finite field. We just need to take uh, a bigger power. And so uh, the issue with this is that with square and multiply, you end up having a lot of multiplications. And multiplications, again, they are expensive. So what we do instead is use uh, Ito Tsuji inversion, which uh, in, the in the exponentiation optimizes the number of multiplications. Uh, they do have uh, a rather large number of squarings, but for us, that's not really an issue because we're looking at mainly looking at the number of Toffoli gates and squaring this linear map only takes C0 gates. So it has a low number of multiplications, uh, a relatively low number of multiplications uh, bounded by uh, log, uh, the log of M. And so uh, by we have a low number of multiplications and these multiplications, again, we implement using the Karatsuba uh, based algorithm. And so here you have an uh, example of an uh, inversion in order uh, for, in this case, for uh, n equals 10. You just do a number of squarings uh, and then you do, uh, you do a multiplication. All right, uh, so now we wanna compare these two. Uh, and if we look at how efficient they are, uh, well, the extended Euclidean algorithm-based uh, inversion has sadly uses a fair number of Toffoli gates, but it uses uh, a relatively low number of qubits, our main objective. And the Fermat's little theorem-based inversion uh, uses more qubits, uh, but much fewer uh, Toffoli gates. And here is an example for n equals 233, a commonly used uh, field. Uh, field. And you can see uh, here the numerical results. And uh, sadly, um, uh, or we know that if no matter the number of uh, the size of n, you will uh, see that these this comparison uh, roughly holds. So we, you have lower qubit count with a higher Toffoli gate count for the XGCD based algorithm. All right, uh, so now we want to put all these things together and we want to look at point addition. The point addition, uh, we have to take all these things together and uh, we need to formalize a bit what we mean with point addition. We're adding a pre-computed uh, point uh, P2, which is a multiple of P, which we pre-computed, depending on uh, a qubit uh, Q. Uh, and then the P1, also is a superposition, uh, which uh, is a fancy, fancy quantum word. But for our case, uh, it does not matter that uh, Q uh, and P, P1 are, uh, are quantum. They actually behave exactly as we want, whether they're quantum or classically. Uh, so uh, our uh, point addition algorithm uh, uses two squarings, uh, two multiplications, and two divisions. And so the divisions really are the expensive part of this uh, algorithm. And uh, we, we need uh, two divisions, uh, despite having the result in one division, because we need to clear uh, our ancillary qubits. Again, having ancillary, creating ancillary qubits at every step is bad. So we need to uncompute these intermediate values. If you're familiar with point addition, you might be, uh, you might be seeing this uh, and, and think that this that this is, gets some issues uh, because specifically that you have special case additions. So the first one is if you add the point at infinity, which is the zero of uh, elliptic curves to uh, x1, you should always get x1. Uh, and the second one is adding uh, p1 uh, to its uh, own inverse or to itself, which should also get, get you special cases. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, the chance of these special cases occurring is fairly low. And uh, in fact, it's so low that by just repeating our calculation uh, uh, a linear number of times, or very small number of times, 
you can just uh, you can uh, make sure that in our final result uh, you do not uh, see these as a problem. All right. So the last thing we can do with our algorithm is uh, pre-computing more points because right now we're just uh, pre-computing a, a very a small number of points uh, and we are not uh, really looking them up. In a classical case, you can speed, often speed up algorithms like this uh, by, by just pre-computing some points, storing them in uh, ROM, and then uh, looking them up. And in quantum computers, this is, this is uh, intuitively even smarter because even in 50 or 100 years, when we might have a big quantum computer, uh, classical computation will still be much, much cheaper than quantum computation just because uh, of how limited quantum computing currently is. So um, by doing, even if we do many pre-computations, uh, we can still get a speed up. So if we pre-compute pre uh, so, some of these points, uh, we have to do a quantum random access memory lookup. And this, uh, and well, this is expensive. Now, uh, in a, I will tell you uh, how expensive we currently think it is, but it's uh, more, much more expensive uh, than a classical uh, random access memory lookup. So you have to limit the window size. Uh, and so for, again, we have an example here where you have uh, n equals 233. You can see the number of Toffoli gates is dependent on the, on the division again, but uh, if you Pre uh, if you have a window size of seven, you suddenly uh, have uh, one over seven times the number of Toffoli gates. And you can take the, this to the extreme. For example, if you have a uh, window size of 32, you need to pre-compute uh, around 69 billion points, uh, but you have much fewer Toffoli gates. Otherwise, it turns out uh, with our current uh, approximations, uh, we think our the optimal window size uh, for every field, uh, for every N, uh, is probably between seven and 16. And explain why. First, let's go for the summary of our results without windowing. Uh, so, in our results, you see that the vision uh, really is the most expensive step. So, here we have uh, some of our results without windowing. So, we have some small results so you can see how it increases. And for the bottom three results, uh, are, you can uh, look at currently implemented uh, binary uh, elliptic curve cryptography. And so, uh, for the final case, we can say that you need about a quantum computer of roughly size uh, 2,000 or 4,000 uh, to uh, with 2,000 or 4,000 logical qubits, so not physical qubits, logical qubits, uh, to solve uh, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman uh, very efficiently. Uh, now let's look at uh, windowing. So for this, we do need to uh, approximate uh, the cost of a QRAM lookup. Uh, so we look at some previous work. And this previous work uh, gives us an approximation uh, for every lookup based uh, on the size of our window. Uh, and so again, you can see our results. The bottom three are of currently widely used uh, binary elliptic curve cryptography. And the number of lo lookups uh, and the optimal window size increases, uh, but the num total Toffoli gate count in this case uh, is, uh, is much lower than the total Toffoli gate count uh, without windowing. All right, so uh, we are fairly happy with these results because they uh, our current uh, division and multiplication algorithm, uh, we think they're uh, very efficient. And we can give uh, for any given N, uh, we can give an, uh, a, a good estimation of the number of logical qubits uh, you need. And most of these qubits end up being uh, necessary uh, ancillary qubits for the division, a little over half. So, um, and we also can say something about number of Toffoli gates, which currently is still uh, rather large, unfortunately, uh, but uh, we do think it's uh, optimal given our division and multiplication algorithm. Uh, so uh, previous work uh, in the prime field uh, has given uh, similar results. And you can really see how, how nice the binary finite fields are in this case, because uh, they have cheaper addition, cheaper multiplication, um, and cheaper division. 
and that's not, uh, and that gives us a pretty significant speed up. Uh, and finally, uh, if you are familiar with elliptic curve uh, algebra, uh, you know that uh, sometimes you use projective uh, coordinates, and they can really reduce the number of divisions. Uh, however, all currently, uh, all currently know all work we are aware of uh, that uses projective coordinates does not optimize for space. So, in the previous work uh, we compare, uh, we compare with in the paper, uh, they uh, do not, they do not optimize for space at all. Uh, they, but they have uh, very, very few divisions, uh, so they have a much lower Toffoli gate count. But because you need to, they keep a lot of intermediate val values around. Uh, they have significantly worse space. Uh, so we think our results are, are, will be very useful for future quantum computing. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>